Good morning. Okay. Wow, the net network infrastructure upgrade that's going on outside just stopped. That's good. Uh, so I apologize for the noise that's going on out there. What I wanted to talk about this morning um, is really how the service provider moves to embracing a media cloud. Um, and so let's just jump straight into it. Right now, there is a multitude of complex delivery models out there. Um, just the sheer increase in terms of content. Typically, we were used to multi-hundred channel linear services, tens of thousands of VOD content. But now it really is getting to be more like infinite content sources that are becoming available to us, both in terms of having to embrace over-the-top offerings, being able to embrace as well as the extension of linear and on-demand, as well as user-generated content. In fact, for a service provider to be successful with the consumer, they need to ensure that they can provide the consumer with every possible service, especially in the video entertainment space, that the consumer might want to have access to. So that will mean, over time, embracing a lot of the over-the-top services and being the single point of being able to offer those services. Multitude of delivery and distribution networks, and as some of the previous speakers have talked about, just the sheer explosion in terms of devices on which content is going to be consumed. You know, just looking at connected TVs, let's just be nice and say there's only six major manufacturers. Um, each of those will do probably about 40 models of connected TV a year. So there's 250 new devices coming onto the network each year, and that's just one category. Very quickly, we're into thousands of devices. Netflix today supports over 700 unique devices on the back of their network. This is one of the biggest challenges in front of service providers, which is how do you address that myriad of devices that are relevant to the consumer as we go forward? So one thing that's happening is, from a technology point of view, adaptive bitrate is a big disruptor. It's providing a new technology capability into the platform that allows us to be able to deliver high-quality video over managed and, more importantly, over unmanaged networks as well and take out that whole stopping and starting uh, problem that we used to have. Um, as you do that, it really does start to give you the ability to redefine what you do in your traditional head end moving forward, and that's what we're going to talk a little bit more about. So today, there's kind of two worlds. There's the internet data center that people are very familiar with, very standard web services protocols. It's built for scale. It's basically off the rack of iron. Just get the latest uh, platforms you can, push them in there. And it's a best effort model. Compare that with the traditional MPEG head ends that are out there for high quality entertainment video distribution. And it's very different. Those are very tightly coupled systems that have been evolved over the last 15 to 20 years. They're built for performance. Quality of service is critical. It's a guaranteed service model. You know, when, when something goes down in that system, automatic failover. You cannot take video away from the consumer. What we're seeing as we go forward is really a blending of those into what at Cisco we view as the media cloud. And that becomes an open, unified architecture, one where you really start to leverage virtualization. Virtualization gives you the ability to dynamically stand up services on your network to deliver content and applications as and when they're needed. You don't have to provision through traditional appliance models um, in the head ends as we have today. It gives you massive scale and performance. Just looking at the kind of numbers in terms of those devices, the number of streams that are being put out there on the network, thank goodness for H.264, at least half some of the bandwidth requirements to the IP devices, and 265 will help improve on that as we go forward. Um, and the other piece is it's going to give us very efficient ingest storage and management of content as we go forward. If you look at the, literally the number of profiles for a single piece of content that's needed just to address the devices in the market today, it's about 400 unique copies of the content when you actually think about the different aspect back ratios, frame sizes, uh, potentially codecs in some cases, bit rates, and even DRMs that they have to be encapsulated in. 
Um, this is something that has to be managed as we go forward, and there's a lot of standards activities that we and others in the industry are driving forward, things like MPEG Dash, to try and reduce some of the variables that come into that. So service providers have some challenges today, given the kind of uh, view of the market that was given by my colleagues earlier. They have uh, today very much a, a scale-constrained infrastructure. Um, every day you read about someone launching a new service to an iPad, um, invariably it comes with some hiccups as it gets launched uh, because it gets oversubscribed and oversubscribed very, very quickly, especially now as we're starting to launch lots of linear services to iPads. Uh, from the last presenter actually pointing out that still linear is still a very big driver out there. And so as you enable those services on these devices, which have to be delivered today in a unicast model, it puts phenomenal scale challenges on the network. Also today, a lot of the way that people have gone to market has been an incremental way of going to market that's been measured again over the last 20, 15, 10 years and standing up unique silos of infrastructure as they've gone to market, whether it was standing up a linear service, then adding VOD to it um, in, uh, in conjunction with their internet service for over the top as well. Time intensive deployments, the way that we've launched services in the TV industry has to change. You know, today, especially with set-top box models, it's been a, a matter of you develop something, it takes three to six months of test in the labs, before you can actually launch it. What's going on and is already well underway is embracing internet technologies to enable us to actually get internet speed in terms of how we deliver services. That's already happening on the unmanaged devices that have a common internet framework on them, and we're seeing that kind of thing through HTML5 as it evolves, being deployed now onto the set-top boxes as well. Mission critical applications, as I said earlier, you cannot afford for this to go down. It has to be up and running all the time. So the real question is, can you take your large, complicated, power-hungry MPEG head ends of today and actually be able to move a large component of that literally into the cloud and give you agility to be able to stand up new services and capabilities as and when you need them, literally to make a no-regrets investment that allows you to move forward. So, you know, moving to data center type architectures and beyond to the, the media data center, it's actually leveraging, obviously, a lot of what's gone on in the enterprise space. Um, and so when we actually look at some of the savings that happen, this is just from the in enterprise space, and then trying to apply it across into the media data center model, you can see as you've taken traditional data centers, move them to more of a virtualized platform where you can dynamically allocate resources as you go, and then putting them on a common unified compute and storage platform that gives you increased and added flexibility, you get some pretty very strong savings as you go, both in terms of the cost of the solution, the size of the solution, the power utilization, um, and just your speed to market in terms of launching new services across that. So there's some foundational tenants that we care about um, when you look at the media cloud. Some of these we've talked about in the challenges already. Um, one is leveraging it to deliver both traditional TV and web protocols. We have to break down the silos that exist today the legacy platforms that are in place are fantastic. They deliver video. They you know, go to devices that have been out there in the field for some time. People can watch the content that they want on them. That's fantastic. What we need to be able to do now is start to build a common ingest point for content, as was mentioned in one of the previous speakers' presentations, and actually then be able to leverage that through the cloud and deliver that out to all of these devices. We need to leverage virtualization, and we'll touch a little bit on what are the kind of services in a traditional MPEG head end that you can now start to virtualize as we go forward. Moore's Law is a fantastic thing, and it is coming to play now in traditional MPEG head end architectures as they evolve to the cloud. You have to distribute media intelligence throughout the infrastructure. Um, you have to be able to have the right analytics to be able to look across the entire system all the way from the point of origination all the way to where the consumer is actually consuming the content. 
and using that data be able to dynamically change flows, to be able to do failovers, to be able to stand up incremental new transcoding capabilities based on the demand that you see, to be able to take things from on-the-fly transcoding to putting them on your content delivery network so they're there as you see the popularity of the content rise. It has to be that converged infrastructure to reach that myriad of devices. Um, one of the things that we see happening in that space, and it was talked a little bit, a bit in the previous presentation, is there's a lot of fragmentation of environments on these devices today, whether it's iOS, Android, and especially in the connected TV space where most of the manufacturers are going after their own app store play and, and have kind of unique SDKs right now. Our view is very simple, which is there needs to be a, a lingua franca out there, and for us, HTML5 is absolutely driving in that direction. It will be very difficult to find one of those devices that does not support an HTML5 browser, invariably in addition to whatever its native environment is, but then you will be able to leverage the cloud to offer content to touch each one of those devices in a very, very economical and scalable fashion. And you have to manage the evolution from your legacy systems. The legacy systems that are in place today is the service provider's biggest asset. It directs and addresses that existing consumer base that's out there. So how do you bridge those systems into this new world is very critical. So when we look at where some of those workflows can be optimized in the cloud, there's some very, very clear areas right now where it is being utilized. This is not about what will happen tomorrow. This is what, how it is being used now in some early deployments that are out there in the marketplace. So it's everything from content management, content management systems, being able to stand those up in the cloud, being able to virtualize those as well as you go to um, multi-tenant solutions where you may stand up a CDN behind that content management system that you as a service provider enable multiple other content providers to utilize. So almost a wholesale model there. Session management and device management. This is the first time with the rise of unmanaged devices, this is the first time in the TV industry where the uptake of a service hasn't really been driven by the installation of a new device in the home. When you go back to it, you look at digital transition, you look at high definition, you look at DVR. These all started with the very first truck roll of a box that had that capability and then there was a curve of take-up rate. With unmanaged devices, there is overnight a step response, and how service providers react in terms of being able to address the scale needed to deliver to those devices that come on overnight. You know, three million of the new iPads were sold last weekend. There's another three million devices coming onto the network over one weekend around the world. Um, these are the kind of you know, new world order in terms of what service providers need to start to expect. Video transcoding, um, as we look at adaptive bitrate transcoding, something that works fantastically well in the cloud, something you can virtualize, and again, stand up just the right amount of that capability as and when you need to. The same with encapsulation. Today, there's, let's say, three major encapsulation formats out there, hopefully through the effort of MPEG Dash and the standards organization will take that three down to one, which again will reduce a lot of the storage needs um, in these systems. Encryption, I'd love to say that it brings it down to one DRM, but it doesn't. There's too many business models there at play. But hopefully through the activities of ultraviolet and other uh, industry consortia out there, we're going to see probably a handful of DRMs that are prevalent. And again, the application of DRM and encryption can happen very readily in the cloud on a virtualized platform, on a unified compute and storage platform. So getting those common workflows in place is going to be critical as we go forward. Here's an example of um, some deployments today. So when you start to look at standing up an adaptive bitrate head end, well, let's just say you've got 150 channels, uh, which is a, is a normal sized uh, installation today. When you move that to more of a uh, unified and compute blade model, um, you get some phenomenal savings. Uh, in rack space, just the cables and the operational complexity that it goes from a back end that looks like the thing on the left to what you see on the right. Um, and perhaps more importantly, going from 150 management interfaces to one. 
the operational savings in this cannot be underestimated. Everybody focuses on where's new ARPU coming from, and that's a great thing to focus on. But we have to understand that the complexities that we're adding to these systems as we go forward makes it a potential operational nightmare. So we have to focus on everything we can do to reduce the operational complexity for the operator, and by extension of that, for the consumer as well in the home. So when we look at some of the benefits that come out of these kind of approaches, obviously increased services scale, the ability to drive on a common and proven platform, the performance gains that we've been talking about, being able to stand up new services very, very quickly and start to address internet time in terms of video entertainment delivery, and also reduce costs. Uh, both in terms on the operational side that I was uh, talking about, in terms of training and things like that, but also in terms of a world, you know, a, from a green perspective. It's lower power, lower cooling requirements, lower real estate, and most importantly, lower complexity as well. So, some of you may be familiar with Videoscape, uh, which is our end-to-end uh, -end, uh, architecture for uh, video entertainment delivery. One thing we recently did uh, earlier this year is actually took this system and uh, independently uh, the European Advanced Network Testing Center went through and validated that. Um, they just took all of the equipment, they, they stood up I think uh, about a 30 million dollar environment with lots of other third party equipment and capabilities in there for their testing and so we wanted to look at what fell out of that in terms of results. So number one, it was a very comprehensive test um, in terms of validating the transcoding, the multi-format content delivery. Uh, Media Suite is the content management system that's in there. All of these things instantiated in a cloud media data center, um, driving the scalability of adaptive bitrate across thousands of devices. When we were talking earlier about device management, session management, things like that, the design points for those is supporting hundreds of millions of concurrent devices. Hundreds of millions. That's what a service provider of the future is going to have to address. It's not tens of millions or millions, it's hundreds of millions. Uh, being able to support redundancy across that and also being able to support uh, mobile video. Um, if you go to uh, lightreading.com, you can probably see all the results of that test and get into the nitty-gritty of what they did there and start to see some of the benefits that we believe really position the media data center uh, as we go forward as an important part of the cloud. So just to finish on, how do we see all of this emerging um, as we go forward in terms of this move from traditional data centers or traditional MPEG head-ends through to the media cloud. So today, there's legacy systems that are already in place, uh, typically very closed environments, uh, because you're there with very, uh, very, very focused vendor solutions. Um, there's a lot of consolidation going on right now, as people are starting to have to address the incremental needs for scaling in their environments, uh, especially with the rise of unmanaged devices and delivering to iPads and the like. People are implementing the Blade solutions in terms of the unified compute platforms so that they can suddenly have literally a rack in a head end and they can dynamically configure what that rack's doing. One day it could be doing you know, a whole bunch of uh, offline transcoding for VOD and the next day it could be used to actually address some incremental linear live encoding requirements. Uh, you have that dynamic capability. Virtualization applies across the board as we go forward. It is the way that you will ultimately deliver the efficiency and scale that you need and have even more flexibility. And all of this leads you to the media cloud. And in the media cloud, it's also about having a unified network management capability. We talked earlier of that example where there was one management interface. Again, you have the ability to consolidate those management interfaces into those devices when you have a standardized unified platform underneath it. So with that, wow, 36 seconds. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Ken. <laughs>